Wednesday with Becky Stern. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's show. We're here live in New York City for some wearable electronics with me, Becky Stern. Today's co-host is superstar wearables writer Leslie Birch. Hi, Leslie. everybody. I have shout outs. First, everybody in the chat room, I love you. It's so cool that you're here. And also for my hacker spaces, Hive76 and the Hacktory in Philadelphia, I love you. It's Leslie IRL, everyone in the chat. <laughs> she really does exist. She's not just a chat bot I wrote to say nice things. It's true. I am real, and I really do say nice things pretty often, though, don't I? Yeah, of course you do. I love Adafruit. It's true. Leslie, what's on today's show? Oh, my gosh. We have so much happening on today's show. So let's talk. It is Wearable Wednesday, so of course we'll be reviewing things for Wearable Wednesday. Yep. Um, we have component of the week, which will be? A temperature sensor. Love temperature sensors. As per Leslie's request. Yes. I have interests in certain topics. That's one of them. And, and speaking of topics I like, how about tools we love, which is? Today we're talking about if this, then that. <laughs> Which I have a, also a broad interest in. And finally, we all have questions, especially me, and Becky will have answers for us later. Today's prize is a flora. If you have any questions about wearable electronics, you can post them up now in the ch live show chat, later in any YouTube comment or on the forum, the Adafruit blog, on Twitter, etc. And I will gather them up for a future show, making you eligible to win the prize. And it is real, and floras are awesome. Remember that you can attach all sorts of sensors. It's very powerful, very powerful. All right, so let's talk about our favorite code today, which is Leslie. Celebrate the fact that Leslie is here by buying something from the Adafruit shop and getting 10% off. The um, gift code expires tonight at 11.59, and it includes everything except gift certificates and software. Um, and it may be Leslie, but it is not cheap. It is just awesome. OK, cool. It's a discount. It's not a, you know? It's a discount. OK, we like it. So moving on, let's go to Leslie. What? Are you wearing? Oh my gosh, let me turn it on. Let me turn it on. Um, 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 okay, hang on. I have to find my little opening. It's Velcroed. Um, it's a project that I made um, just a little while ago, but I like it. I was inspired by, I don't want to give this away. Um, for those of you who follow me, you kind of already know what this is, but. Can we see? Can we see? It's kind of hard to tell we'll here. Be able to, but we can see it in the video. Can we yes, hear we you, though, while you're... Ugh. Will we be able to hear you while you're... Can married? you hear me? Okay, I'm going to talk like this. So it was inspired by the Northern Lights. It's basically using a Gemma. It's using individual NeoPixels that I stitched. You can kind of see it's like a zigzag design. Um, it's been diffused. These are actually a couple layers. There's big fake fur in here to keep me warm in winter. Um, there is mesh on the outside, stretch mesh, and inside is white silk to help diffuse the LEDs. Um, and I really wanted to just mimic Northern Lights because I love them. So that's so my nice. baby. That's so my baby. Nice. So you wrote code specifically inspired by the, the colors from the Northern Lights. Right. I did a lot of research and played a lot of video footage people have captured yeah. of the Northern Lights just to get the colors like this. Um, and I noticed that it's actually done by gases, which in real life, if you could test for certain gases in the atmosphere and have it react to that, that would be awesome. Well, that would be neat. Um, but anyway, that's an idea I had. So I really like this project. It's one of my favorites, um, mostly because I got to play with diffusion. Yeah. Um, and then I also actually added white fake fur on the inside on top of the NeoPixels in here uh, just to help with the diffusion. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So that's my baby. If you want to learn more about Leslie's Northern Lights cowl, she did a blog post about it a couple weeks uh, ago on the wearables blog, bleh, wearable Wednesday. So <laughs> if you um, find the link in the description of the broadcast you're watching now, that's all of the wearables posts and it's not too far back. Yeah, fun nice. stuff. Anybody can do it. So moving right along into Wearable Wednesday, every week we celebrate yes. your projects and we debut a new video. First up on Wearable Wednesday. Let's go with, what is it? What is it? It's a GPS watch. This is by Sean Cruz, and he posted this up on YouTube. It's uh, a fully functional, like, smart watch, basically using all Adafruit components. It's got a pro trinket ah. with a live poly backpack, an OLED display, an Adafruit Ultimate GPS, some buttons and a temperature <laughs> sensor, and a, a batter, live poly battery in there. So You know, if they just make the cuff a little bigger, I think we could add at least three more sensors. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yo, guys, I heard you like sensors, so I put some sensors in your watch so you can sense while you sense. No, I like it, though. I like it. Yeah, it's really nice. Okay, so, for sharing uh, that. yeah, it's actually impressive, and I'm sure that was not easy to do. So, uh, so moving on to um, a blog that I um, posted here. Uh, MIT is doing some energy harvesting, which you know is a favorite topic of mine because I always think it'd be cool if we could make use more of our own movements. So I always think of flex sensors when I think about this stuff, but MIT has perfected things. They've used electrochemical 
um, devices. So they're doing two thin sheets of lithium alloy electrodes, and then they have another layer of porous polymer soaked with liquid electrolyte. So basically what happens is they are actually doing a small bend. Usually when you're doing energy harvesting, you need like a sharper bend. So this is neat because it's a gradual one, very small, that it can pick up energy. Um, I think they call it migration. I think they actually use the term of energy migration for the lithium. So um, it's really great. I think it's going to do a lot of changing for wearables. Most importantly, cost effective. So that's going to be helpful. Neat. So it's like if you put it in like the bendy parts of your pants or your like an shirt. elbow or something small you so could be like charging up a battery while you're just going about your daily movements That's i think they're exciting. also going to talk about it for medical use of course too but i like the idea that it's a small movement because oftentimes i mean i've seen people jumping up and down to like do energy harvesting you're like that's not really realistic during no, the day that you're going to do 20 yeah. jumping jacks no, and well, like then the calories you have to ingest in order to <laughs> like create that energy like it's not a, it doesn't even no out. no yeah. no oh. so anyway but i do like neat. this project well, very cool so reading all those Research papers, Leslie. All right, what's next? Click a little higher up. Ready? Go, go. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, it, it, so. Last week, <laughs> last week you posted this cheer lights cast from that Element 14 lady, and um, I think I would like to call it a trend that if, <laughs> don't get down if you break your wrist, just put some electronics on it. So this is from YouTube user Harry Ashcam, and he. Uh, he super glued a Gemma and a NeoPixel ring and a NeoPixel jewel onto his cast. You know, uh, that's so bright that I hope it's not affecting people with epilepsy in the room. You have to watch these medical uses, well, you know? The, <laughs> well, um, he's the patient. Also, you get some strobing from the NeoPixels in your, depending on it's your shutter true. Speed, It's a video so. thing, yeah. So he says he, he super glued a uh, Gemma, a NeoPixel ring, <laughs> and a momentary switch, and, um, and a button, and he has also a vibration motor on there. Uh, it's very cool. So um, I'm calling it Trend for 2016. We've already seen two mm -hmm. wearable electronic cast. And I mean, like, I put EL wire on my knee brace, but that was like years ago. So. Oh, you were one of the beginners then. So, like, I think we should, I think everybody, first of all, anybody that goes to their doctor, especially if a doctor working with family and children, please tell them to do this. Or at least, like, yeah, tell them about Adafruit tutorials so that they can. Because, like, if you're a kid, yeah, you're super down. Oh, he's got the lithium battery just tucked in between his skin. I don't know. I don't know, buddy. Okay, well, don't don't follow exactly what they did, okay? <laughs> it might not be healthy for you. But awesome project. Thank you for sharing that with us. Cool. Moving on to another cool project. This is a temperature-sensing scarf by Instructables user Caitlin's dad, and it uses all Adafruit components as well. It's got a flora, a NeoPixel ring for the bulb in the bottom, and then mm. a NeoPixel strip up the thermometer there. And it's, um, yeah, it's showing you the temperature like in the room. I think that's really funny. <laughs> And well, it's a good use of the ring, too, actually. Yeah, it looks fabulous. It's very um, punny, right? I love a good visual pun, which is like, I'm wearing the scarf to keep me warm because look at how cold it is outside. <laughs> well, I also like it because you know I often uh, make hints about my feelings on climate change. And I think if you wore this scarf, it would sort of be a reminder of, oh my gosh, look why I'm wearing shorts one day and why I'm bundled up with some North Face outfit the next day. So. Nice job. There's an instructable about this project so you can see the process of how it was created and uh, maybe make your own temperature sensing. Anybody something. can make a temperature sensing. Okay, so let's move on to a topic everyone, I'm sure everyone has been wondering what happened at CES this year. Let's take a look. CES, the Consumer Electronics Show in <laughs> Las Vegas. Um, we, Leslie and I are working on a roundup of CES pro, uh, wearables for later today. Um, but this is a little preview. Who sent this to you? Leslie? This was one of my friends, Mike Baylog, who on the slide just quickly like texted me this video. And you know what? I could not find any record of this dress on the internet. So I feel really lucky that he captured this for me. Yeah, if you know, and there was like a fashion show too. And it's just, I feel like at the event, there's a lot of focus on what's happening right there. And then like in the weeks after you see stuff come out online. So if you know anything more about this dress, let us know. But we'll we captured it first. There it is. It's got a huge <laughs> butterfly. It's really quite That's interesting beautiful. looking. So oh, yeah, it's so beautiful. Um, and so, uh, but there was a like wearables has exploded at CES. Like there were a, a lot of VR headsets. Like mm. in it, uncountable number of smartwatches. Um, Phil and I were talking about the watches, and he thinks that Apple Watch really like made a bunch of wearables companies like pivot their strategy. Like they were in the middle of making something, and then the Apple Watch came out, and they're like, "Oh shoot, we need to add those features too." So you see a lot of more Apple Watch like features in a bunch of the new smartwatches, which are just there's a huge list of them. But that, but what I found, watches are fine and they're interesting, but I find the the more oddball stuff a little more interesting. And there were um, a couple of different smart shoes that track your steps. 
smart uh, socks, smart bras, smart shirts, um, a lot more like garment embedded, garments embedded with sensors. Um, that Which just, that's another trend too, because people have been talking all along that they feel like that um, things were looking too weird or robotic and they weren't really wearable, but everyone likes these things embedded into the clothing that they're more natural. So I think we're all t seeing a test of the market there and see, well, it's kind of like you throw the spaghetti at the wall and you see which ones <laughs> stick. Um, we always love food, food analogies and metaphors, so. <laughs> and then um, I noticed a trend where a lot of the fitness trackers now are looking a lot more like jewelry and a lot less like uh, sporty. A lot more. Which I like that. I don't know. I feel like, like I mean, you all know that I have my Fitbit and I've written about this, but I mean, it is sporty and like you wouldn't want to. I mean, I'm wearing it with a dress today, but normally it's not really. It doesn't you really wear work. it on the red carpet. No. Like, oh my gosh, no. So you're seeing mm -hmm. a lot more metal finishes, a lot more like materials exploration mixed in with the electronics that crosses over into the jewelry realm. So look forward to our roundup on the blog later today. Yay. Um, and um, yeah, next year maybe I'll go to CES. Um, me too. Maybe we can go together. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Okay, today's debut video wow. is about the Gotenna. So the Gotenna, go like go what? <laughs> yeah, it's like an antenna that goes with you. So oh. Gotenna is a, um, a wireless, a long-range wireless radio uh, that connects to your phone over Bluetooth. So it's for off-the-grid communication. I mm. explained it all in the video though, which is okay. quite long, and I want to maximize Leslie time. So let's just watch. Okay, the video. let's rock it. Welcome to another Adafruit wearables teardown. Today we're taking apart the Gotenna. It's a long range wireless radio for off the grid communication. It pairs with your phone over Bluetooth and then communicates with other Gotennas up to four miles away, depending on the environment you're in. It's great for things like music festivals where the cell network is oversaturated, um, wilderness communication for hiking, and it's also encrypted. To turn the Gotenna on, you just pull out the antenna that activates the device and then you can pair with it over Bluetooth. It has a fabric snap attachment point so you can attach it to your bag or your person while you're walking around. It communicates best with other Gotennas with no obstacles in the way and when there are buildings or trees or other obstacles it reduces the range. It allows you to send text messages, but also locations, and you can store offline maps. That way you can send your friend who's hiking with you your location and find each other while you're off the grid. It works with iOS and Android, and it's a pretty sophisticated device. Let's see what Lady Ada had to say about the design of the circuit inside. Thanks, Becky. So um, the Go10 is a really interesting radio device, and so looking forward to some really cool RF circuitry inside. So let's look at this circuit board. It's not too big, it's about two inches by maybe half an inch. There's a lot of labeling on here which makes this uh, very easy to uh, analyze. You can tell by the, lo by the logo that this is a Freescale processor. It's uh, exactly the MKL27Z128V MP4, which is a Cortex uh, M processor, I think it's an M4 processor, it might be an M3 or M0. And over here, there's uh, some Spanch and Flash. We've seen these in a couple wearables where they have to do a lot of data logging. Uh, so this is a uh, eight pin SPI Flash, probably, you know, about half a megabyte or so. And this is going to store uh, messages and data, maybe has calibration information. It, there's not, there's no EEPROM on a lot of Cortex M0s. So this would be a great place to stick data while you're buffering it. Over here, we see there is starting to be the, the RF analog section. There's a lot of components here, a lot of wire inductors that are used to match and filter the signal. So this processor is connected directly to this chip, which is a Scilabs SI4460 119 to 1050 megahertz radio, which is kind of neat. I mean, this is a very wide band radio. It goes all the way from 100 megahertz to up to about a gigahertz. From what I recall, the Gotenna is about 100 megahertz. Again, the lower the frequency, the farther you can go. Less data, I mean, it's, it, you won't be able to transmit voice as easily over data over 100 megahertz. But since it's only transmitting small sort of SMS-like data messages, 100 megahertz means you can just go that much further. So this is all the assistive circuitry for that. And then over here is a leather chip and it says RF10G. And while it, I couldn't find the exact data sheet for this part, it's, it's pretty clearly an amplifier chip. And the reason you can tell is because on the back, there's this heat sink gunk and this um, spread out ground plane. 
it's in a weird shape just because that's as big as it could get the ground plane. And it heats, heat sinks to the body. Um, and then you know, this amplifier is what's going to really give you that boost of signal when it does the transmission or it's, it's waiting to receive. On its own, maybe it would only give you, you know, maybe a couple meters of signal. But with this boost, you can get up to a couple of kilometers. Definitely you can tell a lot of care and love was put into this analog section. And then um, over here is power filter circuitry, basically just getting everything for the amp. And then it connects to the antenna. Over here, we've got the LiPoly battery. You've got kind of a classic LiPoly, 350 milliamp hours. Um, you want to get this as big as possible so you can supply a lot of current to the amplifier. Remember, like, it's going to take a big rush of current. Even if you have uh, capacitors to help you, you're still going to have like a big spike of power when you do a transmission. So the bigger the battery, it's not just for how long it lasts, but whether it can source that much current safely. You know, you can see there's this really nice big thick trace that goes right in, feeds into the amplifier. So right here is where you're going to get that power feed. And then of course it's going to also have a little trace on the back that, you know, goes over here and powers the microcontroller as well. This is the uh, SDW debug and programming pins for the main Cortex processor on the other side. This is the NRF8001. Uh, we even have a breakout for this in the store. It's a common. Bluetooth 2.4 gigahertz transceiver. It's, it's ROM only. You don't program this chip. You basically send it commands over SPI and, and it sets up the Bluetooth connectivity for you. Very simple, there's a lot of good documentation. It's an older chip, it's really well known. So they do all the processing on the uh, Kinetis Freescale processor and just leave this to do just the Bluetooth stuff. Okay, we've got you know the radio, you've got all the analog support circuitry, a lot of power path stuff going on here into the amplifier. Um, but where's the antenna? Where the path goes is out of this amplifier, through this uh, inductor over here, and then to this location. This is a little piece of glue. And this is a flex PCB antenna. Another interesting thing we noticed when taking apart this antenna, as you can see here, this little thing here, this is a um, rare earth magnet. And this is what indicates to the microcontroller that yes, it's been turned on because when this is pulled open, this Hall effect sensor you know, no longer detects the magnet. You can connect it up to an interrupt pin on the uh, Freescale processor and just when you see it go off, that's when you turn on the LED, turn on the radio, and turn on the Bluetooth low energy. Cute design. For this and many other teardowns, we use these tools and the Adafruit USB microscope with its articulated stand. What wearables should we take apart next? Let us know in a comment below and check out our playlist to see all of our previous wearables teardowns. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the Adafruit channel on YouTube. Okay, did you guys We're like back. that? We're back, we're back. Did you like that? Mm -hmm. um, shout out to my friend Raphael Abrams, who's a, the, uh, the RF, and well, the main engineer of the Go Tenna, and he, he wrote me today to say, like, oh, when Lamore said that I had lots of labels, I felt like I was on the right side of history. So, like, that's <laughs> cool, and thanks for giving me the tip on how to open the Go Tenna, because um, I was probably going to mangle it a lot worse than I did uh, if he hadn't given me a tip about, like, one of the seams being, like, false and the other one being real. Um, anyway, this Which is a, interesting, like why would you have a false seam, but well, that's just interesting. just to give it that symmetrical look on the side. Oh, uh, okay, you know? yeah. Anyway, um, this was really fun to test out when I was on holiday break in, uh, in Joshua Tree in California, and um, I am looking forward to using the Gotenna in like an emergency situation. Well, you know, not looking forward to an emergency <laughs> yeah, situation. Hopefully you will not have an emergency situation. There'll no, be no stalkers outside. And I like it for my, <laughs> gee, thanks, Leslie. Um, I, I like it for its, uh, um, I like it for my preparedness. The preparedness part of me like really likes it um, for when, if like the, if we have another massive power outage uh, where the cell towers go down, um, it, it's, it does not work as well in an urban environment as it does uh, out in, in Joshua Tree is like the perfect place to use it because there's not a lot of tall trees or obstructions besides rock formation. So if you had line of sight, we got it to work pretty far away. But here in the city, we had a lot uh, more trouble getting it to go because of the starts bouncing off of the buildings and stuff and you get a lot of interference. So um, yeah, I see some questions in the chat about it. Um, you know, our teardowns are mostly about the insides of how it works, but um, I'll entertain a few. Uh, the Gotenna <laughs> only communicates with other Gotennas 
and you can do like a shout or like a group chat to a specific number of people or just one-to-one -one messaging, but it always uses the GoTenant app. So, oh, okay. so it's, it's limited to what you can transmit by what the GoTenant app says you can and can't do, right? So it's just text messages and locations that work with the offline maps you download through the GoTenant app. So it's not for voice, as Lamore mentioned in the teardown, um, it's a really like low frequency, which makes it go a longer distance, but it means that it's not as fast of a frequency, obviously, so it's, it can't transmit a lot of information. So you're only gonna get those, those small bits of text mm. and those location um, data points. So un until they release like an API or they open source their app, uh, you're not gonna be able to, to really like force any other types of transmissions in there. That would be cool if they do that. Are they thinking about it or we don't really know I'm yet? I'm not sure. Do okay, yeah. But cool, thanks guys. They, um, full disclosure, GoTenna sent us those GoTenna's to take apart and test out. Although I did purchase some myself too before, during the pre-order period because I'm excited about this product. She's such um, a Girl Scout. Be prepared, be prepared. Yeah, sure. And, um, and so you can um, find the link in the description of the broadcast for the, um, the parts list on the Adafruit Learning mm. System and the video is up on our YouTube channel as well. And of course, if you want to DIY your own stuff, you should be using our discount today. Go Leslie. Code is Leslie. It's 10% <laughs> off your whole order on Adafruit, excluding gift certificates and software. It expires 11.59 Eastern time tonight. Moving right along, we got a lot go. of time to cover still. Component of the week. What is it? What is it? What okay. could it be? The component of the week is the <laughs> MCP9808 temperature sensor. This is, as per Leslie's request, she's like, I want to add a temperature sensor to my northern lights cowl. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about that. Yeah, because I could have two different color choices, like because yeah. there was another whole range of colors I liked, but it didn't really make sense to mix it in. So I thought, well, a warmer temperature would do one color range and a cooler would do mm -hmm. another. Right, so um, this is a great I squared C high accuracy temperature sensor that would work really excellently with something like the Flora or any other um, I squared C capable microcontroller like the Arduino Uno or um, any of those things. It has a range from negative 40 degrees Celsius, that would be absolute zero for all of you who at home who don't know, to 125 degrees Celsius and with a precision of 0 0.0625 degrees centigrade. So it's very, very... <laughs> Sounds seriously accurate. It's very accurate. <laughs> um, you can use it with... Um, it's got a wide logic range, so you can use it with 3.3 volt microcontrollers and 5 volt because it can go from 2.7 to 5.5. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, it's great. So it has a code library and uh, the next slide is of the tutorial yeah, on the Adafruit Learning System for getting up and running with it really easily. Yay. And um, we do have a ton of temperature sensors in the store, including ones that are combo barometric pressure, humidity, and temperature temperature sensor. So if you're looking for something a little more um, versatile, you should take a look at some of those. But this is a great choice for getting started with just a basic digital temperature sensor. However, your Northern Lights Cal uses a Gemma, correct? Yes. Yeah, so I wasn't okay. sure whether I could use this one for it. So here's the deal. The, the main uh, restriction on the gem is the size of the flash memory on board the chip. So sometimes, uh, most of the time, actually, our I squared C li libraries for Arduino are too large to fit onto the Gemma. So uh, we have seen somebody modify the LSM303 accelerometer library to be small enough to fit on gotcha. the Gemma. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure about this one. I haven't tried it with Gemma. So I have another recommendation for you. Okay, cool. Um, and I might point out that one reason I like these flat jobbies is because those bigger holes, you actually could attach that onto a wearable garment just by stitching through those with regular thread. Right. The so that's holes. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all right, let's check out your other one. Okay. This is a classic Adafruit product. This is a TMP36 temperature sensor. It's an analog temperature sensor. So it works. Uh, I, to, like analog, what does that mean? To huh? completely overgeneralize, <laughs> it's sort of like a potentiometer where you're gonna have you're gonna hook it up to your analog in, and you're gonna mer uh, your analog to digital converter on your Gemma is gonna measure the variable voltage coming in through that pin mm -hmm. and convert it into a number between zero and ten twenty four. And then if you there's also a tutorial for this sensor okay, cool. on the Adafruit Learning System that shows you a very basic mathematical formula for taking that number zero to ten twenty four and converting it into um, a, a number you might recognize more as a, a Celsius a temperature, temperature right. Right. degrees. So that would be, if you're looking for a very, this is this sensor is only $1.50, so if you um, are looking for a very low cost way to get into temperature sensing with your Gemma or your any other Arduino, this will work with um, with all of them. Uh, so here's my guy. question though, the, the longer prongs, like I'm always worried when I see analog things, like they look wiry and leggy and I'm scared they're gonna get in the way in a wearable, so how do you deal with that? Sure, so I would say kind of like, I have here one of our vibration switches, and so um, I would say you solder 
silver uh, wires, so silicone coated stranded wire onto each leg and you heat shrink each individual connection oh, and then you put one okay. big piece of heat shrink over the whole thing and that way you've got this kind of encapsulated which is sturdy and protected which I rather like for those wire ends right, right? so it's not gonna it's not gonna bend easily it's gonna be and, and then you can put it on wires as long as you want so in your cowl you could put it like close to the surface so it's getting the temperature of the air rather than your body or your body versus the air depending on what you're looking for and then um, wire it up to your Gemma from kind of far away so I'm just trying to think of what time I bus gets back into Philly tonight if it will be in time for the discount so I can buy this very sensor like everybody else should do which with the discount they could do this best discount code lead in ever uh, <laughs> Leslie <Wednesday. woo. laughs> <laughs> all right so what's next let's go with tools we love which Becky is always great with talking about tools or singing about them for that matter <laughs> mm, okay so let's go with so the, the tool we love this week is if this then that I F T T T dot com and it's um, it ties in with Adafruit I.O., but first I'm going to tell you what it is, like, j broadly, and then we'll okay. go more into it. Um, it's a, like, a cloud sort of, like, data mashup site where you can mm. easily, without having to write any code, select um, inputs like, like weather and um, social media mm. streams and stuff, and then route them, combine them in things called recipes to create an automated action. And so, for instance, a very popular ones that I use and a lot of people use are uh, natively posting my Instagram photos to Twitter, or mm, okay. um, in this case, you're seeing my module for uh, if I hit like on a video on YouTube, it automatically posts it to my Tumblr. Ah, okay. uh, so it helps sort of like automatically manage some social media stuff that way. Um, you can also have it like email you a digest of tweets, for example, if you, you know, like you can kind of customize it. There's also a lot of smart home modules, so you can control the um, you can have it like flash your Philips Hue lighting when you get an SMS. Or something I hope my like husband that. heard that. I just got Philips lighting for Christmas, so for yeah. Sure. <laughs> the custom. I love the um, the color change as it gets sunset. It like it mimic brings the lights, yeah. warms the light up with the current sun, sort of like yeah, that's really cool. Oh nice. And Matching. then um, so that's it's very convenient. Like it does neat automated convenience things. But one thing, a cultural thing, I found uh, in just browsing through popular recipes. Um, that really has improved my life in my neighborhood has been the uh, e every day email me a digest of Instagram photos geotagged within a certain radius of my home. Oh, that's cool. And so I get like an email with all these pictures that were tagged that happened, I mean, whether they happened inside or outside, like it's a whole picture of like email of pictures that happened in my neighborhood that day. And so I can feel like I know like what was going on. I see all these pictures of the sunset. I can learn the names of my neighbor's dogs, which is useful so for me. Hopefully Becky will be taking me out to dinner or to some cool place that she discovered. I that found one. a new oyster spot that way. Yeah, because I'm like, somebody posted up a board of an oyster spot I hadn't seen and it had to be in my neighborhood. And I'm like, where is this? Anyway, so, so like if this and that is really cool to try, even if you're not into electronics, however, the next slide will show you how you can use it with electronics. Nice. So. Um, and this is all interesting to me because I've been asking lots of questions. I'm embarking. Um, so I just, I mean, wearable is awesome, but I also have an interest in art projects or wearables that act like art projects gathering information mm -hmm. from the net. So I like to take in different information around the world. And I, I mean, would I light up things or have audio? I don't know. But this is all good to learn. So um, since we launched Adafruit IO, which we've covered on the show before, is our cloud data service um, that can work with all your Adafruit electronics, either through Bluetooth and the um, iOS or Android app, or through Wi-Fi directly with our like Huzzah modules, for example. Huzzah. We have a, a If This Then That channel for Adafruit, and it hooks into Adafruit IO. So you can see here we have like 32 recipes. Basically, it can mm. um, like physically, the, the same way it can make your Philips Hue light bulbs change, it can make your Adafruit electronics project change. So mm -hmm. you can have, for instance, one of my students last semester used a Huzzah board and the daily weather reporting to have the daily weather report come in through Adafruit IO, talk to his Huzzah board that's on his local, his home Wi-Fi network and light up a coat rack to tell you like what you might need to bring with you that day for the weather, like an umbrella or a jacket or scarf. And, um, and if you're not a morning person, which I'm not, I would absolutely love that because I don't need to have to think about that walking out the door. I'd rather just know by being told. So Another student made a, um, a thing that was a lamp, a night table lamp that encouraged you to write your daily gratitude journal. And it, what it took was the blogger module. And when you published your gratitude journal on blogger, it would then turn the light off. And you couldn't turn the light <laughs> off unless you wrote your gratitude journal. <laughs> 
So it was like enforcing a daily habit, um, and it was really nice. You know, you might want to contemplate something like that in your life with mindfulness, but anyway. Sure, you could really enforce, really put a hard line down about your mindfulness. Anyway, so um, if nice. you're curious at all, you can make a free account and poke around really and see it. all yeah, of the there's Adafruit, more mm -hmm. um, recipes that are people that Adafruit's made and that, that other users have made, because anybody can make an, um, yeah, you can, you can even get an alert by email when, when, the, when we tweet the discount code. Oh, yay. Uh, speaking which, discount code. It is, for newcomers just joining us, it is Leslie, which is moi. So feel free. Get your 10% while you can. Expires All right. 59 p.m. tonight, Eastern time. So make sure your bus gets in and get home, okay? All right, so let's move on to questions and answers. I We're always have a ton of questions. Bonus overtime for you guys today. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That's okay. Good. So okay. let's rock it. So yeah, let's go with the price today's a flora. One of the questions that was asked previously, you will win a flora. If you have any wearable electronics questions, you can ask them now in the chat. I will capture them, or later in any YouTube video, or on Twitter, or on the Adafruit blog, or on the forums, and I look through and gather up questions for the future show about wearable electronics. You have regular electronics questions. Save them for Lady Ada on Ask an Engineer, uh, which is also a good show. I might add, it gets really involved in techie, and it's lots of fun. So okay, let's go with question number one, which is. How long this Gemma project, okay, with five NeoPixels, oh, oh, how long will this Gemma project work with five NeoPixels um, if it's using two CR2032 lithium batteries? I'm working with same hardware, but only three NeoPixels, but apparently they're using a smaller battery, um, and it says it will light up the pixels only for a few minutes. So what should they be using, or how do you figure that out? Okay. On the, on yeah, the let's answer. go. Yeah. Like, okay. yeah, so man. There, the question is about the Space Face LED makeup project that's five NeoPixels and the, and the two uh, CR2032 battery holder with the on-off switch. And um, in my experience, this project, like the batteries last for about an hour and then you oh. change them out, but, um, but the brightness isn't all the way up. And oh, okay. I would like challenge you to tell me why your NeoPixels need to be full brightness. <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever had my NeoPixels on full. That was one of the first things I learned, which I really like, because it really does cut down on like battery power. It's if true. You can... So generally, the formula for finding out what battery you need is you take the maximum current draw of each component, add them together, and then your battery much match, must match or exceed that number. And then if it matches, um, so say your, your thing draws 2,000 milliamps, which is a lot, then you would, no, it's not a lot. That, I'm bad at orders of magnitude. 2,000 milliamps, you would need a 2,000 milliamp hour battery for it to last for one hour. And then a 4,000 wow. milliamp okay. hour battery would last for two hours. However, um, when you add up the, the NeoPixels, say they draw a maximum 60 milliamps, but really uh, that's only if all three LEDs are on, like so you're full brightness at white. And if you have them animating, turning on and off, fading in and out, or you have uh, them not at full brightness, it's not gonna consume as much power. So right. I think these out of, are on like, brightness level 80 and it lasts for like an hour and then but you really have to balance like how big you are willing your battery pack to be versus how often you want to change the battery so if you're at a party where you're wearing this makeup look it's totally acceptable to have to change the batteries every hour if you're going to wear it just for that one night for three hours however if you're looking for something to be on for a really long time and you're willing to have a bigger battery pack you can always like run a wire down and put it in your pocket so um for three neopixels i'm not sure what the off the top of my head what the mm. 2450s are like but um, i would say lower your brightness and then maybe consider an animating pattern that doesn't have the LEDs on all the time, and then you'll get that to last for much longer than a few minutes. Plus, people like animating patterns anyway. It's, it's more fun, so yeah, sure. go with it, go with it. All right, let's move on to the next question. All right, from Mr. Piano Man, can the floor work as a pet tracker? I know it has GPS, but can I use it as a real-time tracker so that I would know my pet's location? Something like the tiny Duino, but different. I'm thinking, why do they want to do that? What are they trying to do with that? So um, you might have seen our GPS logging dog harness that uses the Flora and the Flora GPS, and it, it logs the GPS uh, information, and then in order to get it off the uh, device, you have to plug it into the computer. So it's not real-time tracking. Um, in order to, I, I have to preface the answer with, a, with the same giant pet disclaimer I always do, <laughs> and that is, um, I, as an expert in wearable, electric DIY wearables, I would never put a circuit on my dog and let my dog out of my mm. sight for any amount of time. It's irresponsible. And not just because something could go wrong, but because you don't know what could go wrong. The dog could get it caught on something and it could short the battery and burn the animal. And then the dog, the animal can't get the device off right, and, right. and can't help itself. 
Um, additionally, uh, the, the animal could get the device off and then eat it. Like you don't, you don't know. And so my advice for if you want a real time GPS tracker for your animal is to buy one. Have you ever seen the whistle? We did a teardown oh, of their okay. previous version, um, maybe two years ago. Uh, their new version has real time GPS tracking and it has a cell phone module inside it. So, um, the reason I would and usually, usually you know I'm like make it don't buy it but in this case when you're not going to be with your pet it's really important that all of the um, safety concerns have been taken care of for you by a company that has a vested interest in not getting sued right so the whistle is um, I think it's just whistle.com it's a waterproof collar mount device um, that has real-time tracking and you pay for like a data plan for it um, so that aside, if you wanted to make, say, a real-time tracker using Adafruit products for like your car or your, even like your child or something else that has agency enough to remove the thing from themselves if it's burning them, um, you can use the Fona. And we have, uh, if you look up Tony D's mm. Track Your Treats Halloween Candy Bucket Project. I remember that, yeah. That has uh, the code you need to get started with uh, pushing your GPS coordinates to the cloud in real time over the cell network using MQTT data protocol and Adafruit.io. Um, but please, 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 please do not make a Fona GPS project, put it on your animal and let your animal go unsupervised outside. It's irresponsible. No animals were harmed on this show either, I might add, so. Okay, next question. Da, 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 da. From Scott, do you have any suggestions for enclosures or packaging to protect a floor used in clothing or bags? Again, I'm wondering, like, why do they want to, what are they protecting from? Yeah, I mean, it, you, you were it, abrasion, weather, dust, yeah. I'm not sure, but that's okay. We can cover all of those <laughs> Um So usually I don't put flora inside an enclosure of any kind. It's designed to be sewn right onto the fabric of whatever you're doing. I, it shouldn't really be touching your skin directly. So you've seen it in like the sparkle skirt, it's between layers of fabric. Um, and that way it's not gonna short out against the moisture of your skin or anything like that. Um, but if you're, if you and the components are on there quite securely and it's very flat. So it's not really in too much danger of like shearing components off of right. the board. However, I understand you might have some weird extreme use and if you wanna waterproof it and you have a soldered circuit, you can always um, coat it with like clear nail polish or conformal coating. And uh, the video I'd recommend you watch is the rugged wearable electronics video where we go over a bunch of different ways to make right. your electronics projects more rugged, both with weatherproofing and um, physical physical enclosures. And then um, Noe and Pedro made a project with the Flora wristband, and that's a NinjaFlex 3D printed enclosure that uses, it makes the floor into kind of like a watch. Um, that's an accelerometer uh, circuit. So that's th a good example, because that's slightly bendable too, which would be good um, from a wearable standpoint. Right, so if you really want to put it in an enclosure and you're not just looking for like a waterproofing solution, um, you can, uh, use a 3D printed NinjaFlex enclosure. But I would say nice. like just coat it or put it between layers of fabric um, because it doesn't need, it, it's, a lot of beginners ask, oh, I feel like I need to put it in a box. And it's like, <laughs> you, you don't need to put it in a box, it's okay. <laughs> Plus I always like electronics to breathe anyway. Sometimes they can get warm and it's just nice to have it's some true. air. If you're so. driving like a ton of NeoPixels, it's, it's important to have ventilation for your flora as well. Uh, just if you have a ton of NeoPixels though. Okay, all right, questions. it's time to pick. It's time to know, pick for the prize, Leslie, the Flora. Pick a, pick a winner. <laughs> okay, the winner is Mr. Piano Man. Okay, promise me you're not going to use this Flora to make a, a pet tracker that you <laughs> keep your pet supervised during the time of, I mean, like, it'd be cool if you, if like, oh, okay, the pet is, like, I'm with my pet, and the pet is sending the data to the cloud, and so that everybody else can see where we are, but it's not for unsupervised pet use it's true but i'm sure mr piano man will be cool and and hopefully you will also send us like a cool picture of whatever project you end up using for it so. i'm sorry i scold because i love um if you uh <laughs> she's tough love <laughs> to claim your prize email support at adafruit.com and we'll email you out your flora and if you were not a winner today of course you're a winner because you're probably already in our chat room and we love you but if you have not won something today you can still get something with our 10 percent discount and maybe a flora which is something you can hook up many sensors to which is awesome so you should just do it already the so. code this week is leslie in honor of leslie co-hosting the show you can get 10 percent off your whole order ex everything except kitchen figures and software valid through 11 59 p.m tonight eastern time okay all righty then if you can't get enough wearables you can sign up for our daily tips newsletter i get it i get it <laughs> We'll just, we're, we're gonna do the outro of the show quickly. To all right, ready to go. Um, and then if you want more engineering, you can, or engineering at all, because we, we talk about the 
a lot of the non-engineering parts of wearables. Um, stick around for show and tell tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can show off your own project. Just sign up on the Google Plus page. Um, and then Ask an Engineer is at 8 p.m. tonight. Very cool to hang out with them. And then we also have, if you're into 3D stuff, Tomorrow is the where they debut a new project and they answer they do shop talk and they answer your questions about 3D printing. Love it. Electronics. And uh, big thanks to Leslie. Thanks for coming to host the show. Was I it love fun? Did you have a fun, <laughs> you a fun time? Did you have a good time? I always have a fun time because it's Adafruit and it's like a workshop here, like a toy workshop. It's awesome. So We're going to go hack on some electronics. We are. We really are. Feather. We're doing Feather. Shh, don't don't forget that. we co-broadcast on Twitch and Periscope. You see you, Periscopers. See the, the behind the scenes. And... Uh, I will see you next week. Uh, Kate Hartman is co-hosting. I won't, um, but Kate's awesome. I got we'll to hang out with her in Germany, but I'll probably be hanging out in the chat. I'll yeah. be in the chat. So, okay, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. See you see next ya. time.